So question eight then, from paper one. A long question. What we've got? Find x that satisfies that equation. Well, the first thing is to gather them, I need to pop those powers back in. So log base x of six, put the four back in. Minus log base x of four, put the two back in, would be one. Now you can gather them together. Log base, log base x of a subtracting logs, that'll be the quotient of the numbers they're operating on. So that's a division comes to 1. And then you can either think what power of this gives 1. Well, if that's power 1, then that must be the number. Or get rid of log x by taking it across and making it x to the power. And x to the power 1 is just x. So x will be just whatever this thing comes to. Well, 6 to the 4, 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. That's 36 times 36 over 4 times 4. They both go in 9. 9 nines are 81. So very quickly, x equals 81 for that quest. Now question 10. <clears throat> the graph shows part of the... The sketch shows part of the... So question 10. This diagram shows a sketch of part of the graph of y equals log 2x. It just says state the values. And you probably know it's going to cut at 1, so that means a is 1. We have to have a wee think about that though, because you have to think what power of 2 gives the answer 8. Well, that does it, I suppose. Well, you could write it out formally. You could write it out this way just by putting the numbers into the equation. Even though it says state, I think I'll do that just for the practice. So using the equation, it says this. If you put a for x, I'll have log 2 of a and 0 for y. Well, that means a would be, take that over, 2 to the 0, which is 1. So a is 1, which you probably knew anyway. Same with the next point. If you put 8 for x, you've got log base 2 of x equals b. Well, it says what power of 2 is power 3. So b is 3. So the first part would be a is 1, b is 3. Second part says sketch the graph of this transformation. x plus 1, that means it shifts back 1. And then overall back down 3. So this graph's going to move. So you've got this graph which is going through these two points here, and that's meant to be just one away from the origin, which means that it's going to move back one, and then down three. Well, luckily down three is enough just to take that one to the axis. If that hadn't have translated onto the axis, you'd have had to wait, work out that point of intersection. But as it is, it's quite easy, if I can recall that very quickly. So the answer is going to look like this. Where that shifted back one, so instead of x coordinate eight, it's now seven, and that shifted down three, so instead of y coordinate three, it's now y coordinate zero. Same with that. That was at one, it goes back one, so it's now at zero. It was at zero, it dropped down to three. Zero, negative three. y equals log base two, x plus one, minus three. That'd be that question. Now, question 11, quite a lengthy question. It's a 10 mark question here. Describes two circles. One circle, it just gives you the information you need, centre radius. The other one, it gives you the equation. One, one, everything's there the way you want it. So the radius of the first circle is four root two. Well, you know the centre straight away. I know the centre's going to be four, five. So I can go on and say the radius is going to be the square root of four squared plus five squared, take away the number at the end. So it's going to be the square root of 16, plus 25, take away the 9, so that's going to be dum 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 32. The 32 is 16 times 2, so that's 4 root 2. So that's the first bit. Show the radius is 4 root 2. Part 2, show that the circles touch. Well, there's two circles, oh, this is twice the radius of that one. You put the relative positions down, so that's negative 2, so you've got a circle of a certain size, that'll be circle Q negative 2, negative 1. This is at 4, 5, so this circle is twice the size sitting up here somewhere. Not a very good drawing. That's circle P. Show that they touch. Well, they will touch if the distance between their centres is the same as the sum of the radii. So I've just got to show that the distance between the centres is equal to 4 root 2 plus 2 root 2. So I've drawn a diagram and named that D so I can quite safely put D down. So it has a meaning on the diagram. 
So the distance, so I'll have a distance formula. I'll put the d squared to save the big square root. So the difference in the x coordinates, difference in the y coordinates between the centres. So the difference in the x coordinates, 4 take away negative 2. 4 take away negative 2, I could just have said 4 plus 2. Difference in the y coordinates, 5 take away negative 1, I could just have said 5 plus 1. 6 squared plus, oh, I hate it, as soon as you do that, you know the answer is 6 root 2. Because what you've got is, you've got a square of side 6 and 6, and the ratio for a square is 1, 1 root 2, so it must be 6 root 2. But having launched myself into the numbers, I'll just have to carry on with it. Ah, so that's 36 and 36, so that's 72, I know I could have done something with that. So D's root 72, but there's, of course there's two 36's in there, yes, so it's 6 root 2. So there we are. Distance between the centres is 6 root 2, but R1 plus R2 is 2 root 2 plus 4 root 2, the roots being the same so I can add them, is 6 root 2. Then I suppose I better make a statement. Since D equals R1 plus R2, hoping that will do instead of the words, that means the circles must touch. But if I want to be specific, it'll be externally. Because if the distance was equal to the difference in the radii, that means the circles would have been touching the small one inside, that would be internally. But it only said they touch. Since the distance between the centres is equal to the sum of the radii, you may want to put that in words, that means the circles touch. Part B. Find the equation of the tangent to circle Q. Now it's always handy to have a quick sketch. You can put a relative sketch down quite easily because you've got the coordinates. You know how to position them relatively. You can even put the axis in and put the sizes in relatively just so you can check your answers. It says the equation of the tangent to circle Q at this, at this point, and then the second part goes on and cuts this one. So I can draw that in. So it's a tangent here and it intersects there. Right, first bit, what's the equation of that tangent? Well, that's easy enough. It's a line, I need to know a point on it. Well, I've got the point on it, the point negative four one. I need its gradient, I'll get that by reference from the radius. So I'll get the gradient of the radius first. The gradient of the radius, difference in the y coordinates over the difference in the x coordinates between the centre and the point. So that's going to be, I've got them down here, it's always handy having them to hand. So that's going to be the difference in the y coordinates We'll start with this one. 1 take away negative 1. I'll just make that 1 plus 1. Negative 4 take away negative 2. Negative 4 plus 2. So that's 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. And that looks about right, it's sloping downwards. Which means that the gradient of the tangent will be the negative of the reciprocal, which is 1. So I need that part. And then for the actual equation of the tangent, well, it's a line. y minus b is mx minus a. I've got a point on it, I've got its gradient, ready to go. So y minus the y coordinate is just 1 times x minus the x coordinate, take away negative 4, so that'll be a plus 4. So y will equal just x plus 4 plus 1, so y equals x plus 5. I'll give that a name, because I can see I need to refer to that later. Then for part c, this tangent that you just found, carries on and intersects the second circle, but you've only to find the x-coordinates. And it also says, express your answer in this form, a plus or minus b root 3. Well, that implies that there won't be an exact factorisation. When you carry out the substitution, you'll get a quadratic. You would normally factorise that, but it won't factorise. The discriminant won't be a perfect square. Well, fair enough. Right, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to substitute this line I just had into this circle 2. So wherever you see y, you write x plus 5. So I've got x squared plus y, x plus 5, minus 8x, minus 10 times y, x plus 5, whoops, plus 9 equals 0. Multiply it out, gather up to quadratic, x squared, square the bracket, square the first, eh, twice the product, square the last, minus 10 times that bracket, don't forget to negative that one as well, minus 50 plus 9 equals 0, tidy it all up. I've got two lots of x squared. 10 take away 10 minus 8 minus 8x. Oops. 25, 34 minus 16 equals 0. Common factor of 2, out you come, because I'm not going to do anything else with you apart from find the answer equal to 0. Minus 4x minus 8 equals 0. And then you know that doesn't work. That doesn't factorise. I'm just going to go in with the formula. x equals the negative of that, so that'll be 4, 
plus or minus over two times that two of the discriminant, whatever that is, the square root. So I'll just work that out. So I've got 16. Take away, but it's a negative, so plus, and that's going to be 32. So that's going to give me 48. But then 48 breaks down into three sixteens. So that's four root three. I'm running out of room here. So I've got four plus or minus four root three upon two. I can put it just over here. Divided both parts by two. That means x equals two plus or minus two root three for the answer. Right, 2001, the second paper, there's nothing loggy circle This mentions circles, but it's only the centres that are used to identify a triangle. Uh, question 9. It's not log strictly, it's exponentials, it's a growth and decay equation. Not too many marks, only three because it's quite easy. And what does it say? It says it's, this is the area of a forest fire, that's the original area. This gives you the area after a certain amount of time. It says when t is 1.5, as long as t is measured in hours, and it is t hours. If it said t was measured in minutes, and it said one and a half hours, then you'd be putting a 90 down. The units are consistent, that's fine. Then the area doubles. That means the area will be twice the initial area. You don't actually need to have the initial area. You can always express the new one as a multiple of it, no matter what the question says. If it said the new area was 75% bigger, then you would say 1.75 times it. We'll just feed that in then. So the new area is twice the original. That's the original area. When t is 1.5. So 1.5 times k is to find k. Well, that means there's only one thing to find that's k. So just get rid of all the bits. Get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. So taking that across and divide, of course, makes 2. You could put any number in there, doubled it. When it divides, it's going to make 2. So e to the 1.5k is going to equal 2. Next thing, get rid of that. e to the power. That'll be log base e, or you just write ln, ln of 2. So k is quite simply going to be ln of 2 divided by 1.5. Press the buttons, and then there you are. So ln, ln being the natural logarithm, log base e of 2. Don't forget to close that bracket before you divide. That division will happen in here before the log takes effect. Divided by 1.5, and there you are, 0 0.46209, and so on. I didn't specify anything for accuracy, so I'll just go for three significant figures. K would be 0 0.462. That's that question.